Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. Um, today's episode is another really exciting one for me. Uh, this is the second review in our uh, review series that we're starting on Tavor. Uh, Tavor is a company um, that offers craft beer lovers the opportunity to get their hands on craft beers that they, for the most part, otherwise would not be able to do. These are not beers that are readily available all throughout the country or even globally. And uh, some of these, even if you live in the city where it's brewed, they're in such small batch and such high demand that they get snatched up and they're gone before people that even live in town can get them on release day. So basically you can think of Tavor as your inside man to let you get access to just a plethora of amazing craft beer uh, in America and abroad uh, that you otherwise would not get the opportunity to sample. Um, the last video that we released was episode one in our Tavor review series. Uh, today is episode two, and uh, so far the episode one beers were all amazing, and, and I mean that. They were absolutely amazing. So I'm really excited to see how the rest of these beers stack up, and uh, we'll continue working and uh, getting more beers from Tavor and bringing them in to review and keep giving you different ideas of just what's out there in the craft beer scene. So today's episode is uh, gonna be a fun one. Um, we're doing uh, some Belgian style beers. All of these are brewed in America. So these are American craft beer interpretations of Belgian uh, quads and triples. We've got two quads on the ends and a triple in the middle. Uh, the first of which is from Three Magnets Brewing. They're based out of Washington State. Uh, this one is called the Coco. It's a Belgian quad. It's been aged with cocoa nibs and this one clocks in at 12.3% ABV. Uh, number two is from Taxman Brewing Company. Uh, they are based in Indiana. Um, this is their Mescal Barrel Exemption. This is a barrel, uh, Belgian triple that's been aged in Mescal Barrels and it's got some other spices added. Uh, this one clocks in at 9% ABV. And then finally rounding it out is the second Belgian quad. This is by Monkless Belgian Ales. Uh, they're a brewer based out of Oregon and this is their Friars Festivus. And this one is 10.2% uh, ABV. So uh, three big Belgian style beers, two quads, one triple. I'm really excited. I've never had any of these. I've never had any beers by any of these brewers. All of them are very, high, very highly rated. Um, so I'm really excited to jump in and see what round two of our Tavor review series has in store. Uh, we'll be starting with the three magnets, the Coco Belgian quad. All right, jumping right in with the Three Magnets, the Coco, the Belgian quad that is brewed with cocoa nibs. 12.3% uh, ABV. This does come out of Washington State. And uh, from what I have learned about this brewer, um, it's one I've never heard of. I'm from Tampa, Florida. So uh, we uh, don't get much Three Magnets action. But from what I can see is that uh, they are really causing quite a stir in Washington State. Um, so I'm really excited to jump in and have this as my first taste of what Three Magnets has to offer. Uh, pretty cool little art on the label there. It's under, understated, but I think that adds to the elegance of the packaging. Looks nice. Big tall can. Big ABV. Let's jump right in. I spilled a little on the table, but we'll survive. Let's get this poured right in the glass. Oh, that's a nice dark color. Yeah, that looks lovely for a Belgian quad. I'm not sure I'll quite be able to get the entire beer in there, but that's okay. Okay, just having had poured right in the glass, uh, this you cannot see through it all, uh, even with my set lights holding it right up. I cannot see through this. This is absolutely pitch black and it's quite viscous. Um, it did form a head that dissipated, just has some remnants on the edge, which it's a Belgian quad. That's rather what I expect. Um, let's give it a give it a nice sniff here. That does smell very chocolatey. Um, 
It smells like a Belgian quad. There's no question about it. Slightly sweet, uh, but it's also got some rich, almost smoky undertones to it. So I'm wondering if they have some richer, more heavily roasted malts in the back uh, that mix with the cocoa nibs to bring out a more earthy, uh, smoky character to it. Um, this is gonna be interesting. It smells really good. It's got a really nice aroma. It is quite pronounced. Yeah, chocolate. Definitely a bit of smokiness. Um, it almost has a slight hint of uh, coffee bean, though I don't believe those are used in this at all. So this ought to be interesting. It's, uh, it's a very pronounced aroma. It smells really nice. So let's go ahead and jump in, see what this has to offer. That's delicious. Okay, yeah. It's got a nice long finish and the layers of all the interplay of the ingredients are really starting to speak to me. Okay, so out of the gate, first sip, it's got a nice sweetness to it, a nice fruitiness. Um, I would say the fruit that kind of jump out to me most dominantly are grapes, raisins. Um, obviously, raisins are dried grapes, but they have a different flavor profile. Um, it's rich, deeper flavored fruits like that. There's even a hint of cherry in there, like a, a brighter cherry. And then it starts to open up into the chocolate. And then that sweetness you get up front dissipates within the first probably three to four seconds then you start getting all that chocolate and it's very layered it's almost fudgy um, would be the best way i could describe the the chocolate quality and as it finishes and the chocolate starts to dissipate there is just a slight twinge of uh, i don't want to call it a coffee flavor i'd call it a coffee impression and what it reminds me of it's that smokiness that earthiness i was getting in the back probably from the roasted malts uh, puts me in mind of a French roast coffee, a very deeply roasted coffee bean. Um, I don't think there is coffee in this, but you get the impression from the deep, rich roasted malts. This is a very, very good Belgian quad, and it is not boozy. Even at 12.3%, uh, this does not taste boozy at all. In fact, it doesn't smell boozy at all. The overwhelming uh, aroma that you get is that chocolate and that fruitiness that comes through with that hint of smokiness. And uh, it all comes through in the beer. It's got a very nice, very complex finish. It's very, very well balanced. The body, as you might expect, is quite heavy. It is a Belgian quad, and um, it's got the body to back up the volume of fermentables that have gone in to make this beer. Um, the mouthfeel is just silky, silky smooth. Um, almost, it's like a thicker water. It's it's not bubbly. You don't get like these fine, uh, like a nitro tap stout or a cream ale, that kind of fine creamy mouthfeel, but it's like thicker water. It's, it's, as, it's as fine of a mouthfeel as like you were drinking water, but it's thick. It's got viscosity to it. Um, like uh, if you're thinking of engine oil, uh, weight of engine oil, you know, 10 weight, 30 viscosity. That's kind of how I would describe this. The body is the weight, and then there's this viscosity to it as well. Um, that's what this reminds me of. It's very, very pleasurable. Uh, this is a decadent beer. Absolutely is a decadent beer, and it's very, very well balanced indeed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wanted well, one more sip just to get to experience the sensory ride from start to finish again. Just exactly, yeah. Fruity, bright, and sweetness up front. Then it opens up into ribbons of chocolate, deep, deep, dark chocolate. Very fudgy, it's rich, it's rich. Um, dark chocolate with heavy whipping cream and you know a, a deep, fudgy confection. Then just this beautiful, beautiful, roasty, smoky earthiness on the back and it just lingers. This is a really, really nice, interesting Belgian quad. 
um, for the first time of my having anything from Three Magnets uh, Brewing Company, uh, I gotta say, if this is um, similar to what they're putting out there in, in the market, uh, I'm a fan. I really enjoy this a lot. Um, I am gonna take my time slowly enjoying this and uh, come up with my score. And then uh, next we will move on to the Taxman Brewing Mezcal Barrel Exemption, the Belgian Triple. All right, so for the second beer in our second part in the Tavour review series, we're moving on to the Taxman Brewing Company's Mezcal Barrel Exemption. This is a Belgian Triple, 9% uh, out of Indiana. Uh, if you're not aware of what Mezcal is, it is a distilled spirit or liquor, if you prefer, that is derived from the agave plant. And for a little bit of further trivia, agave is a genus that covers a range of species of plant. Um, often mistaken for cacti, they are indeed a separate genus altogether, filled with many, many different species, uh, and they do tend to be succulents and thrive in dry, arid, desert climates. Um, so agave is just kind of a generic term for any number of species in the genus agave and mezcal can be made from any of those species within the genus agave. Uh, regardless, moving on, this has been aged in mezcal barrels. So that liquor that's been made from the uh, very species of agave plants. Um, go ahead and jump in, Belgian Triple. This is the low ABV of the bunch, 9%. So let's get this cracked. and get this poured into the glass. Out of the gate, this looks uh, very much like a classic Belgian triple. Triples tend to be lighter in color than the quads. Um, though they do obviously all vary in color and intensity based on the various malt bill. Uh, this one actually generated quite a bit, uh, quite a bit nicer head than I anticipated that it would. Um, you don't normally get quite this uh, lush of a head from a Belgian triple and certainly not uh, off tap, but I'm pleased. It's lovely. It's uh, slightly occluded. It's a, it's a cloudier beer, kind of a darker ambery orange color, uh, kind of yellowish tints. That's the general appearance. And it's got a nice tightly foam, really tight, fine bubbles there in the foam with some medium ones popping up to, uh, to slow down the pace. Giving it a sniff, it smells very much like a classic Belgian triple. Um, it reminds me of the aroma of your classic Trappist ale. Uh, we did a review on Belgian Trappist ales uh, several, several episodes back. Uh, which you're not, if you're not in the know, there are a handful of monasteries that actually brew beer to this day. So like the classic monks that brew beer, that's what that means by Trappist Ale. Um, there's somewhere between 10 and 15, I think it's 12 or 13 different active Trappist breweries in the world. Um, it smells very much like the beers that they produce here. Actually has a slight clovey aroma, which is surprising to me. I don't know what yeast they use in this. Um, but it smells really nice, very clovey, so not dissimilar to your classic Trappist ale or even a German Hefeweizen. Uh, that's uh, kind of the nose I'm getting. So maybe there's some uh, cloves added as a spice or possibly they have some yeast uh, used in the classic style, but head has settled down, it still looks great. That's a wonderful head for a Belgian triple. I would say that's near textbook. And uh, let's give it a sip. Mmm. Oh. Oh. Man. That's really good. That's a really interesting beer. Oh my God. I did not expect that. What a long finish. And talk about layers of flavor and really interesting ones I did not anticipate. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Where to begin? Okay. Out of the gate, first sip, you get classic Belgian triple. And then it starts opening up to some very interesting and unique flavors. 
I'm gonna go back through to take you through the process of where they all hit me along the really long finish, but I can tell you where it finished was, I don't know if you've ever had it. Um, there's a, a kind of caramel popcorn confection you can buy a brand called Crunch and Munch. Buttered toffee Crunch and Munch, that's how this finishes. It's like caramel toffee coated popcorn, buttered popcorn, that's how this finishes. I did not anticipate that. Certainly never would have thought that I would ever taste that in a Belgian triple. Certainly not uh, one that was aged in mezcal barrels. Gonna have another sip and really think on this. Up front, tastes like a classic Belgian triple. Then it opens up into a burst of clove. And then it opens up into this really sweet, rich, almost custard-like or creme brulee-like quality. And then that finishes off with just like the creme brulee torch where they crust the sugars on the top like that, but it's like buttery toffee or po buttered popcorn mixed with toffee or caramelized buttered popcorn. That's how this finishes. That is such a treat. I did not anticipate that at all. And honestly, <laughs> I am ridiculously pleased with how great this beer is. This is such a different Belgian triple than any I have ever had in my life, and I have had many, many. This is so unique and so interesting. If you're a fan of the style, this is an interesting monkey wrench to throw at this style. If you like trying new beers, I would say this is one worth trying. At 9%, it's not that bad uh, getting into the high ABV ranges of, of say a Belgian triple. It's, it's right kind of in the average, average range, but this is one I think is worthy of exploration. Um, I don't know what spices they used in here, possibly the clove that could where, excuse me, that could be where they get the clovey kind of accents coming in. But never in my life have I experienced a Belgian triple and then just had an explosion of creme brulee and custard and caramelized buttered popcorn. I have never, ever experienced that. This is so unique. It's got a medium body. It's got a really light mouthfeel, silky and light. Um, man, and that finish, it's just blowing me away. And the balance of all the flavors in here is exceptional. You get all of them in sequence, every sip you have. It's in the exact same sequence that I've laid out two or three times now. You get classic Belgian quad with clove. Then it starts to dissipate into this rich, kind of desserty flavor and then you get this crazy buttered caramely caramelized popcorny finish at the end. I mean I've, I've, I've never had a Belgian style ale that tastes like this ever let alone a Belgian triple. One more sip just to make sure I'm not going totally insane here. Classic quad nice sweetness starts to open up the rich dessert qualities and then the sweetness dissipates and then just pure caramelized buttered popcorn i mean that's the trip that's the trip and it's a long finish at least 10 15 seconds on each sip i can it's still lingering and it lingers in your mouth where it finishes it's that buttered toffee popcorn that's where this finishes that is absolutely delicious. What a fantastic beer. I, I am so happy I got to try this. Unbelievably good. Um, we'll come back at the end and give it the full review. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna take my time enjoying this slowly sip by slow sip. And uh, then we will move on to our final beer, the Monkless Belgian Ales, Friars Festivus. That's a classic Belgian quad. All right, moving on to the final beer of our uh, second Tavor beer review series. 
this is the Monkless Belgian Ales Friars Festivus. It is a Belgian quad, 10.2% coming out of Oregon. Um, this is kind of brewed as a winter seasoned Belgian quad. So I do expect it's gonna have some classic kind of Christmas ale spices in here, which uh, really um, ought to pair quite well with a Belgian quad. I've never actually had a winter or Christmas uh, seasoned Belgian quad. So this ought to be really interesting. Um, this is a brewery I've heard a lot about, heard a lot of good things. Uh, the first beer I've ever had by them. So uh, let's go ahead and get a poured so we can see what this is all about. I'm going to try to be gentle because it's a very effervescent. I don't want to get too ridiculous of a head on it. It is a Belgian quad. You don't want a massive, massive head. And I've already jostled a bit too vigorously. I'm going to let that settle for a minute while I take a peek at it. This looks like a classic Belgian quad, more or less. It's uh, maybe a little bit lighter than I would anticipate for a Belgian quad, uh, but it certainly um, falls in the realm visually of what I would expect. Uh, normally, they would have a little more roasted malty uh, malts in there, which would impart a slightly darker hue, but um, you know, it, it, it all comes down to the various malt and uh, grains that the brewer chooses to put in there as the base for the beer. So this certainly looks uh, close enough that I'll, I'll say it's a classic example. Uh, head, I got a little vigorous. There tends to be a little bit of a head on a Belgian quad, but um, this was very effervescent. I was kind of sloshing it down the side, so that's uh, probably my fault. But uh, it's, it's got a tight, foamy formed head, but they're starting to break away. There's some medium bubbles coming up through to break it down. Let's uh, give this just a slight swirl for some agitation, give it a sniff. Mmm, okay. That's got a very unique and interesting aroma for a Belgian quad. You can tell that the base beer is definitely uh, a Belgian quad. There's no question about that. Uh, but the spices that they put in there reminds me so much of a winter warmer ale. Um, clearly nutmeg, cinnamon, maybe some orange peel or zest, uh, maybe some... Uh, cloves or some other related Christmas spices. And as it's a Belgian quad, you're gonna get a bit of that clovey quality to it anyway. That's um, very uh, true to the style, but certainly adding additional Christmas spices in there is just gonna help uh, enhance and uh, combine with the naturally occurring clove profile that's found in the style. So yeah, it really smells great. It's got a very pronounced aroma and you can even smell some rich, deeper toffee undercurrents in, in the nose. And um, yeah, it's, it's got me really excited to try it. We're just gonna fill this up a little bit higher. The whole bottle won't fit in here and I indeed don't want the entire bottle in there because we need to leave room for the glass to do what it needs to do with the beer. But that looks great. Gosh, it smells so good and almost like candied fruits, like cinnamon sugar raisins that were just sauteed and then glazed down to caramelize in a pan before you mix it in with some decadent toffee dessert. This really smells great. It really smells great. All right, let's jump in. That is a lovely beer. That's a really nice Belgian quad. The base beer itself, the style, it's a very nice interpretation of a Belgian quad. Um, honestly, you could pair this next to really any Belgian quad uh, straight out of Belgium, and I would be hard pressed to tell that American brewer brewed this. It, it's, it's a really, really great representation. Now, what takes this to the next level for me is the addition and the combination of spices that they used. Um, I cannot begin to tell you how well this pairs with this style of beer. Such a great inventive idea. I've never seen it. I don't know if there are other brewers trying this, but this is a winner. This is, this would be such a great wintertime beer. It's cold outside. You want a big, heavier, higher ABV, beer that gets you kind of that boozy warming sensation and you get that in this. Now I can tell you 
on the nose, there's not a hint of booziness like you often get with these big high ABV Belgian triples and quads. Not even a hint of it on the nose. Um, you get the massive Belgian quad uh, classic aroma, and then you get the additional spices uh, with which they brewed this beer. But when you sip it, ah, that's when the magic happens. You get big Belgian quad classic flavor. Then you get just this subtle little whiff of booze. There's a subtle little whiff of booze. Then it opens up and you can start to independently pick out all of these spices. Nutmeg, very clear, very present. Cinnamon, no question about it. Um, orange, I don't know if they added some orange juice or some zest, some rind, some peel. Uh, whatever they did, it, uh, and it could be some other citrus, it may not even have it in there. But the flavor that comes through definitely uh, is orange. After that, it opens up into rich toffee, uh, very, uh, very rich toffee flavors. Third sip, this one's so complex. I don't want to miss anything. Ah, I already realized I missed something. In, in tandem with the classic Belgian quad you get up front, you get that classic clove, but it's a lot more subtle in this, um, which it's a polarizing flavor in beer. A lot of people like it, a lot of people don't. So if you're one for whom you don't normally go for say uh, a Belgian quad or Trappist ales or any other the, the big well, Belgian yeast based or the classic uh, German Hefeweizens um, because of that clovey quality, uh, this one is not as intense, so you may actually want to give this a whirl. And honestly, the way that it pairs with the other spices in here is really, really enjoyable. Um, the fruit that you get on the nose, you only get a little bit in the flavor profile, and it really comes in on the back third uh, after it opens up into the rich flavors. Once it gets out of kind of the spices that you get in the front half, it's on the back half. And really the overwhelming flavor that comes through is that toffee, but it does have some rich dark fruit. Like I said, if you were to candy some raisins like cinnamon sugar raisins or uh, plums or dates or something like that, a rich deep fruit, that's what comes through. But the overwhelming profile that is present is that rich toffee, uh, toffee or caramel. It's really, really delicious. Um, the body as you might expect, from a Belgian quad and from a high ABV beer is uh, quite big. Um, this is a nice big bold body which which is perfect for this style. The mouthfeel is very classic Belgian quad. Um, the best way to describe it if you haven't had a lot of quads or you've never really intensely thought about everything that is going in to make that beer experience for you, the mouthfeel, it's not so much a viscosity thing though there is some of that because it's got a high ABV there are a lot of fermentables in here but it's a lot more of a, of a clean uh, mouthfeel it feels like weighty water that's effervescent like weighty tonic tonic with weight with with some weight to it um, not dissimilar to how I was describing you know the weight and viscosity of engine oils it's kind of the same thing in, in a Belgian quad as well. The, the body has the weight and then the mouthfeel is the viscosity. Um, and in this, it's, a, it's, it's like heavier, more viscous water, but it's very, very effervescent. So it's got this really bright, bubbly quality about it. Really nice beer. Um, the head is still holding, and this is, this is textbook Belgian quad head. That's what I wanna see. And I've had multiple sips of this to really pick this beer apart and it's still holding uh, strong and true. So bravo, this is a great beer. I really enjoyed it um, as the first beer I, that I've tried from all of these. All three of these were great first beers to try from these breweries. Um, so far, this Tavour experiment has been uh, an absolute joy for me. Um, but for now, I'm gonna take my time, finish enjoying this beer. I'll write up the score for all the categories, then we'll come back and get all three beers ranked. We'll see you back. Okay, so for the ratings, now that we have had all three of these absolutely delicious beers, 
Um, again, this is the second episode in our side series on Tavur, which is a craft beer uh, company. Um, I have their app. I use an iPhone. I got it through the iTunes app store. It's free to download. Tavur is based in Washington state and effectively they are a craft beer lover's dream. Um, they let you get your hands on craft beers that you cannot get in your local area, uh, that indeed a lot of people in the local area can't even get in the city where they live because the beers are in that demand. They sell out immediately upon release. So it's kind of like having an inside man into the craft beer world, which is fantastic. So this is our second review of beers that I've uh, gotten through Tavor. Uh, all of these are Belgian styles, uh, two quads and one triple. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna go down the list. Uh, starting with the three magnets brewing, this is the Coco, this is the Belgian quad, 12.3%. This is out of Washington State. Uh, the aroma, this was so rich, I knew it was gonna be special before I jumped in. I gave that an eight out of 10. Um, for the taste, blew me away. I absolutely loved it. Uh, as a Belgian quad, chocolate is a very unique ingredient and it really played its part in there. I gave this almost perfection, nine out of 10 for the taste. Uh, moving on to the body, the body was so rich and so thick and you could tell when I was pouring it in the glass it was gonna have some substance and indeed it did. I gave that a nine out of 10. Uh, the mouthfeel, I only gave it one lower point than the body. Um, given how thick it was and that it was a Belgian quad, I expected just a little more viscosity in my mouth. Um, it was very silky, but it didn't have quite as much viscosity. It had a nice weight, but it wasn't quite as viscous, so I gave the mouthfeel an eight out of 10. Uh, for the finish, the finish was super long. Really let you pick apart all of the individual characters that played into it. You got your classic Belgian quad, and then you got all of that rich, dark chocolate. And like I said, as I was reviewing, there was a bit of earthiness, a bit of smokiness to it. And that was uh, very welcome. I didn't expect it. It very unique for a Belgian quad, but it had a super long finish. It was super complex. I gave that a nine out of 10. On the head and the retention, you know, it is what it is. I poured it out of a can. I expect if it were on tap, even with as thick and viscous a beer as this was, it would have had a little better head that held a little more true to the style. Uh, but regardless, uh, seven out of 10, still above average. Uh, the appearance, black as night, pitch black, could not see a hint of light through it. That's textbook perfection, 10 out of 10. Um, the balance, balance and finish relate to me like body and mouth feel. Because if either of them are out of alignment, it's going to impact the other even though they are separate categories, but this was very well balanced, almost perfect. I gave it a nine out of 10. Uh, the feeling and intangible, I absolutely love this beer, as was evident while I was uh, sampling it for the very first time. I gave that a nine out of 10. Um, and finally, as an example of the style, this was such a unique Belgian quad. Um, there's a lot of Belgian quads out there, but I've never had one with Coco, and this was executed masterfully. I gave this, an, again, another nine out of 10. That brings the total score on three magnets, the Coco, to an 87 out of 100. A very, very high score. I absolutely recommend, if you can get your hands on this, seek it out. Um, Tavor, I know, does bring back beers they've done in the past, so it's possible they're gonna bring back this one sometime in the near future. If it drops, just keep your eye on the app, grab it when it releases, you won't regret it. Uh, moving on to number two. Taxman Brewing Company out of Indiana. This is their Mescal Barrel Exemption, the Belgian triple of the bunch, 9% to the lowest ABV, as you expect the triple lower ABV than the quads. Um, mescal is such an interesting beverage and to age a beer in mescal barrels, I don't know anybody else that's ever done it. And mwah, magnifico Taxman. This was such a great idea. This beer blew me away out of the gate. I did not expect what was in store for me. This is a properly and truly special beer. Let's go through the ratings. The aroma, I knew it was gonna be good. I knew it was gonna be good. Um, the aroma away was so pungent and in your face and you could smell the classic Belgian triple, but you could smell the mezcal barrel and you knew there was gonna be something interesting and unique about it, and that's putting it mildly. I gave that a nine out of 10. The taste, 
If I've ever had a Belgian triple I thought tasted as good, I don't know which one it was. And this is brewed in Indiana in the United States of America. And this is probably the best tasting Belgian triple I've ever had in my life. And it's certainly the most unique. I gave that a perfect 10 out of 10. Um, the body, the body and the mouthfeel, I gave them the same score. Um, and they're certainly above average, but considering the style, typically you'll have a little heavier weight on the body and a little more smooth and effervescent mouthfeel. Um, this was still very nice and certainly well above average, but for my purposes, the body got a seven. And again, the same thing for the mouthfeel, I also gave that a seven. Still well above average, a really good score, but uh, not quite up to par with your classic Belgian triple. Um, moving on to the finish, the finish on this beer was so long and layered and it lasted for days, for absolute days. I gave that an absolute perfect 10 out of 10. The layering of all the players in this, to say that it was complex is an understatement. I had to keep coming back for additional sips just to make sure my mind wasn't playing tricks on me. It was that amazing. Uh, moving on to the head and retention, this was actually textbook perfect, even from a can, perfect Belgian triple, 10 out of 10. The appearance was almost perfect for me. Uh, Belgian triple typically have a little deeper hue, a little more orange, kind of ambery background to it. This was super close, but not quite perfection. I gave that a nine out of 10. Uh, the balance on this, was it was just so well balanced. Um, there were parts that played a little heavier hand uh, than other elements of this beer is the only reason I didn't give it a perfect score, but nonetheless, still stupid high, nine out of 10. The feeling and the intangible I got, as you might already expect, I have never had a Belgian triple. I enjoyed this much in my life. This was such an amazing, just plot twist turning a beer experience. There's no other way I can put it. This is beyond unique in the world of Belgian triples. If you can get your hands on this, you won't regret it. This is amazing. Feeling an intangible perfect 10 out of 10. Finally, as an example of this style, you probably expect it and you're right. Another perfect 10 out of 10. This beer freaking blew my mind. It absolutely did. All of the layering, the sweetness, the mescal, the classic Belgian triple flavor profile, then just mind-bending caramel and toffee and buttered popcorn out of left field I did not even see coming and just lingered. This beer is the very definition of a special beer. I cannot recommend it enough. That brings the final score on the Taxman Mescal Barrel Exemption to a 91 out of 100, ridiculously high score and absolutely well-deserved. That brings us on to our third and final entrant. That is the Monkless Belgian Ales Friar Festivus. This is a Belgian quad, 10.2% ABV. This one comes out of Oregon. Now, this is a bit unique, much like the Mezcal Barrel Exemption, in that it's not a classic Belgian quad. They spiced it. It's, it's a winter release Belgian quad, really, and spiced as such. So it has a lot more in common with the classic classic Christmas ale or winter warmer it has the same kind of seasonings and flavors that you expect in those seasonal beer releases. And this was such a great call for this beer style. It pairs so well. It's, uh, it, it was just a treat. Um, the aroma, you got classic Belgian quad up front, but you could smell all of those spices they added in and they all came in in beautiful harmony. I gave that a nine out of 10. Uh, the taste, I did the exact same thing for the exact same reasons. What you got on the nose was what came through in the flavor profile. Nine out of 10, absolutely deserves it. The body, this was almost perfection. It had the right weight and you could really feel it in there. Um, it, it was so close to perfect for the style, I couldn't give it lower than a nine. Uh, interesting take, even though you noticed it was a little lighter than your average Belgian quad, Still, it's just so well executed. It did check off all the boxes in the category. Um, for the mouthfeel, I gave this the same as the body. It was a nine. It was very light. It had a viscosity to it, but it was light and it was effervescent in the mouth, which is very indicative of the style. It is an effervescent style of beer. There tends to be a lot of carbonation that happens 
And with that many fermentables in there, with that high of an ABV, it's kind of to be expected. There's a lot of food for that yeast to create a lot more carbonation and it really came through, nine out of 10. The finish on this was so great. It was so great and it was so long. And just like the, the other beers that we sampled in this review, the finish let you really taste all of the independent parts that they took the time to craft into this beer and I had to give it a perfect 10 out of 10. It was lovely. Uh, the head and the retention, this was textbook, absolute textbook Belgian quad. It was perfect, 10 out of 10 again. Um, the appearance, I only docked at one point. As I mentioned, it was a little bit lighter than the average Belgian quad, but it was still within range and it was a lovely beer. Uh, I gave it a nine out of 10. The balance, just like the appearance and many other categories on this beer, I gave it a nine out of 10. The balance was just shy of perfection. Uh, the only thing that could have possibly made it a little bit higher to give it the full 10 out of 10 for me, even though it was a twist on the classic interpretation of the style, if they could have balanced where the classic Belgian clove notes come in on the quad, just a little heavier and a little longer, I probably would have given it a 10. That was the only place I could mark it, but still a nine out of 10, that's a fantastically high score. Uh, the feeling in the intangibles, I loved it. I, it I don't know as though I've ever had a Belgian quad this unique, much like the Taxman, I've never had a triple that unique. And I gave this another nine out of 10. Well-deserved, very high mark. Finally, as an example of the style, um, I suspect you think it might go one of two ways and I'll tell you, I gave it a nine out of 10. Uh, again, the only reason that I knocked this for an example of this style is because the classic undercurrent of a Belgian quad is that Belgian yeast characteristic where the clove comes to the front and it was just a little too subtle for me. Now, my personal preference, I don't like that heavy, heavy clove presence. So for me personally, I would have rated this differently, but I have to consider the style. All of these beers are ranked on my personal interpretation based on what the style is. So this is their iteration of this specific style. So I had to dock at that one point, but still a nine out of 10. That's a great score for the example of the style. That brings the total score on the Monkless Belgian Ales Friar Festivus to a 92 out of 100. So all, five, or all three of these beers had a five point spread and they were all fantastic. 87, 91, and 92 respectively. These are top tier beers. As our second episode in the Tavor series, um, this is another resounding success for my money. This is the second episode of beers I've never been able to get my hands on, I've never had in my life, never had anything from these brewers, and all three of these beers yet again are beers I would classify as world-class, high mark examples of their style that are worth seeking out if you can get your hands on. Folks, I'm gonna say it again. If you haven't gotten in with Tavor, do yourself a favor. It is just amazing what you can get your hands on. Um, as always, ladies and gentlemen, I really do appreciate you tuning in. I hope that you learned something here. I hope you got some value out of this. And I hope I was at least mildly amusing that you found this entertaining. Um, we're gonna be uh, doing uh, our third review of Tavor as our next episode. I've got uh, probably six or seven episodes in a row on my first crate of Tavor beers that came through. So we'll be doing all of those back to back to back. Uh, so stay tuned. If you like this content, like, subscribe, click the notification bell. You'll know right when our episodes release. Um, for the first few months as we're growing and building the channel and getting all our background work done, we will be releasing twice a week. It's gonna be uh, Sundays and Tuesdays, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But if you're prone to forget, you can click the notification bell so you'll know right when they drop for you. As always, thanks so much. If you have a fellow craft beer lover in your life and you think they'd get some value out of this content, please consider sharing the link. We do appreciate it. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. Cheers, we'll see you on the next one.